Hey everyone, it's me. Um, hope you all are having a good week. Uh, this week you're going to get two videos for the price of one because I'm going to be going out of town. So I um, decided to give you two videos this week since you're not going to have one later in the week. I wanted to end this video continue our discussion about sex and gender. In my sex and gender video, I alluded to the fact that the definition of sex can get very complicated when we talk about all of the different variations that are there, and I assure you that it does. How we classify someone's sex is by their biology and by their genetic makeup. So this means that people with a penis and also those that have XY chromosomes are classified as male and those with a vulva and XX chromosomes are classified as female. This is the simplest definition of sex, but there is a lot more to it. The first point is talking about people that are intersex, so that means they don't have a clear penis or vagina, and also people that don't have XX or XY chromosomes. This includes people that have Kleinfelter's disease, people with AIS, those with ovotestes, and mixed gonadal dysgenesis. These are basically all fancy names for people that don't have XX or XY chromosomes. Also, when we're talking about intersex, we have to think about who actually qualifies as intersex. And this can be very controversial and you'll get different answers depending on who you talk to. According to the Intersex Society of North America, because of this fact, we don't really have very accurate estimates as to how many intersex people are alive today. One of the things that is essential to understand when we're talking about the definition of intersex is how our anatomy and embryology also play into this. Basically, everyone starts off in their mother's womb as a default female. Female is the default sex, and everyone starts off this way. If the baby happens to be male, then what will happen is that um, doses of testosterone will be released in the uterus and the baby will then grow a penis and, and testes and all of that stuff and that extra testosterone is what makes him a male. But often the differences in the amount of testosterone will affect things and affect both the person's identity as well as their physical body because people with less testosterone tend to identify more with or the feminine or being a woman um, and this just basically has to do with the testosterone levels women have only about 10 percent of the testosterone that men do and the more testosterone you have the more aggressive you usually are and also the greater sexual desire and libido you possess since everyone starts off as a female, everyone starts off with a vulva, which would obviously look like this and have your clitoris at the top, clitoral hood, labia minora, labia majora, or the two lips, and then we have the urethra or the pee hole, and then the vagina, um, and that's the vulva. And basically, the clitoris is a small penis, but it's really not small. You only see the tip of it. And the rest of it are glands that go back into the body and it's about uh, six inches long so it's a significant length and it has actually twice the amount of nerve endings of a penis and so it's very sensitive obviously and gives a lot of sexual pleasure because of this though basically clitorises are small penises in terms of what we can see so when a boy is getting the douses of testosterone in the uterus the clitoris will then grow into a penis. So basically, everyone starts off with a clitoris, but some people, depending on the amount of testosterone they get, they don't have a clear penis. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not a clitoris because it's not very small, but it's not a penis because it's not very big. It's somewhere in between. Because of this, this really complicates how we view sex and how we can really classify people. Basically, doctors insist on identifying the baby's gender at birth and will assign them a label that may not necessarily fit them. Lots of people that come out later in life to be transgender actually identify as intersex. This makes it difficult to really assert what the line is since lots of people have varying lengths of penises. Obviously, some are 
extremely short and some clitorises are extremely large and penis-like in a couple inches. So for both male and females, it can be really hard and often they will grow up feeling different than their bodies are. So I just wanted to go over that with y'all and I hope a lot of that makes sense. And I think that in summation, sex is just as variable and subjective of a definition as gender is. And we can definitely from this see the interrelation where sex and gender play a huge role when we're talking about people that are intersex that often feel different than their identity and are somewhere in that gray area of they're not clear male or female. So I think it's definitely important that we be aware of this and be more critical when we're thinking about sex and gender and also be more accepting of others that may not fit into the ideal gender role. So I just wanted to go over that with you guys. Hope y'all have a great week. I will see you probably next Sunday with a new video and toodles.